Uh, if you haven't got enough to eat, it's your fault. Right? We want to start the meeting tonight. Uh, we're going to start with uh, life always do with the, the pledge, and then Dawn's going to say a prayer here, and we'll get her going. So let's start, stand up. And, uh, if you've still got food and want to eat, as soon as you sit back down, you're welcome to start eating. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege of living in America, Lord. We think of all these countries for so many who have been born under all these tyrannies that are in the world. Lord, we're just so concerned about what's happening to our own country right now, Father. Lord, we ask you to help us to open our hearts and our minds and think tonight as we hear the message from the speaker and to carry this out to our families, those who think that there's nothing they can do, they can just be complacent, those who will wake up one morning with that attitude and find their country gone. As we remember, no country has ever lost their liberty and gotten it back. Now, Lord, we ask you to be with these folks tonight and take them home safely. We pray these things in thy name. Amen. I'm going to pass around here. Donna gave me uh, uh, some envelopes. This is for Joe Manchin and uh, how to get hold of him. And uh, there's plenty of reasons for us to get hold of him. Since he's been in, uh, most of his voting is, hasn't been the conservative he claimed to be. So this, uh, there's forms here you should use to fill them out, send them in, or use them to got his email address and everything. So while we're talking here, we'll get this, uh, send these around. You'll see them come by in the thing. Donna got this, and if you run out of these more, we'll try to get them another meeting. Donna? Thank you, Fred. I was at a meeting where Joe's uh, mention staff was, and I said, how do you get a hold of him? And um, I, know, I knew that it took three weeks to get a letter through. So they gave me a bunch of those, and I was thinking, if you got something you want to send them, just put that on the front of your envelope. Or if you just want to send them a message, you sat in that address, and that should get it to them. Or so they told me it would. Um, I thought um, we lost a member of our delegation from Wake County, Larry Border, and we just Rick got Moss that just got his. Uh, the arrangements and I thought Rick might tell you in case you might want to know what the arrangements are for Larry. The uh, State Republican Party put out a uh, notice that the visitation had been announced for Friday tomorrow between 3 and 9 30 at Lovitz downtown Parkersburg and then Saturday 1 p.m. to 2 15 at the Vienna Baptist Church for the service uh, having uh, same place Vienna Baptist Church at 2 30. Okay. Did you catch that? So, in case you want to go to the uh, Levitt's or the funeral. Um, what I'd like for you to do, and we always do that in our regular meetings, and I think it's important tonight because we've got a lot of new people here. Uh, let's go around and introduce you, yourselves. And if you want to say what county you're from, and uh, if you want to add anything, that's fine. Let's just start here with Charlie. Charlie Dawson, uh, Ritchie County. Julia Rogers, Ritchie County. Lewis Rogers, Ritchie County. Harvey Hatfield, Pleasants County. Charlie Thompson, Ritchie County. Kelly Quinn, Work County. Priscilla Quinn, Work County. Linda Hudson, Otter County. Harry Hatfield, Pleasants County. And two back here. I'm Paul Taylor, Pleasants County. I'm a former member of the Republican Executive Committee, right before I went to work for the state. Hopefully, I'm not able to get back in. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Thorne, Wetzel County. Thank you. Howard Quinn, Work County. Jack. Jack Bowie, Pleasant County. Okay, Rick. Rick Modis, Wood County. Dennis Osborne, Wood County. Steve Shepard, Wood County. John Robertson, Ritchie County. Don Siebel, Parksburg Tea Party, Wood County. Sandy Stass, Parkersburg, Tea Party, Wood County. Jim? Jim Romer, Wood County. Angie. Angie Summers, Wood County. Fred Daly, Pleasant County. Janet Wyatt, Wood County. Jim 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 Wyatt, Wood County. J
That's Farm Bureau too, right? right. Put a plug in for Farm Bureau. Uh, Flint Altmeyer, Ohio County. I work for Congressman McKinley's office. Frank Sellers, Pleasant County. Brittany Sellers, Pleasant County. Bill Emily, Wood County. Yes, Mike Hall, Wood County. Ruth Johnson, Ritchie County. Dolores Place, or Tyler County. And we need a Republican governor. Yay! <laughs> Vincent, Tyler County. Deidre Lake, Wood County. Edgar Morrison, Wood County. Mary Stark, Wood County. Tom Stark, Wood County. Don Fleming, Wood County. Tony Fleming, Wood County. Mike Thunder, Wood County. Phil Davis, I'm the chairman of the Executive Committee of Ritchie County. I'm on the State Executive Committee. Jim Bailey, Pleasant County. Jean Bell, Tyler County. Andrew McMullen, Tyler County. Carolyn McMullen, Tyler County. Gary Graham, Wood County. Tom Gaines, Wood County. Thomas Stevenson, Pleasant County. Clive Stevenson, Pleasant County. <laughs> Joyce Summers, Pleasant County. <laughs> Jerry Morris, Pleasant County. Patty Cooper, Wood County, and I'm with West Virginians for Life. And we sure would like to have a chapter, of an active <coughs> chapter here in Pleasant County. And I would also like to say that Larry Border no doubt has an extra jewel in his crown for his unwavering support for the rights of the unborn all the years. That he has been. I'm Janet Hadley, Tyler County. Tony White, Tyler County. Karen Lippin, Richie County. Ginger Malley, Tyler County. Hey guys, I'm Mick Carpenter. I'm the deputy campaign manager for Bill Maloney. I'm from Rome County. I'm Don Morris from Pleasants County. Bill Maloney, Mon County. <laughs> <laughs> um, did we get you? Oh, I was. I didn't even recognize you standing there like that. <laughs> you changed for it. <laughs> what are you leaning on? <laughs> You're leaning on something. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, well, thank you all for coming. But, Bill, you can see that there's a variety of counties represented here tonight. So we want to thank you all for coming. Um, I'd like to introduce our speaker. I met uh, Bill probably three years ago when a fellow senator uh, introduced us, brought him to a Charleston to a meeting, introduced him around. And I was impressed at that time, and then I didn't hear much from him until... Um, he announced his uh, candidacy for governor uh, on the Republican ticket. And I'm just uh, real impressed with him. What he's done before he got involved in the campaign uh, and how he's used his skills and knowledge to help the people in Chile. And um, hopefully he can put that to use in helping West Virginia. So I'd like to introduce you to Bill Maloney, our next governor. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I'll tell you what, before we get going, Larry Border was one of the first guys I met when I went to Charleston this winter. I'd just like to have a moment of silence for Larry and his family. It's tough stuff. Thank you. Thank you. And we're, I know we're, we're busy, but I'm going to try to be there. It's Saturday at 2.30 or something like that. Saturday at 2.30? Yeah. Hell of a guy. Heck of a guy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Gets me going. But I've, I've met a lot of you, but I've, I don't want to bore you with all the details of what I've been doing my whole life, but I'm, I'm not a career politician. I think you all know that. I, <laughs> I've had a lot of businesses. Uh, one in particular, uh, I started in 1984 uh, up in Morgantown called North American Drillers, and our idea was to drill holes for the coal mines with uh, different technologies, and we're able to grow that from a two-man startup to, uh, we had 150 people when I sold it five years ago. But through the years, we helped a lot of other businesses start, and uh, I counted the other day, well, I've counted here. I lose track sometimes, but uh, 16 of them that employ over 1,600 people today, mostly in West Virginia. Uh, a few have had to leave the state for the craziest reasons, like taxes and insurance and courts, and it makes me sick to think that some have had to leave. The one that had to leave uh, a while back was a company called Center Rock, and we started in 1998 along the river there in an old uh, block building in 98 with Brandon Fisher. He, he was a bit salesman for your Moran, 
and he had an idea to take these hammer bits and make these big drills using multiple hammers to drill hard rock. And uh, he grew, he's got about 70 people now. But that idea started right there in Westover, West Virginia. And uh, when I heard about the miners being buried in Chile and going to take four months to drill a hole, I was going crazy. Brandon was going crazy. And both of us were going from opposite directions to try to figure out what to do. We knew we had to do something. And uh, after a few days, we realized we were both on the same track. And a week later, we were on the plane to Chile. And uh, we became Plan B just by hook or crook. And by the grace of God, really, uh, it all worked out. Yeah, things just came from everywhere. We didn't have enough drill pipe. We didn't have like air freight. We couldn't get the bits there. UPS just shipped it for free. I mean, things just happen all the time. And uh, you know, as God was with those miners, He was with us to be there. And I feel the same way about what we're doing here in West Virginia today. I don't. I don't need this job. I'm just doing it because the state needs help. And uh, I feel like I have something to offer that's different than what we've been seeing for the last 79 years. We need something a little different. And uh, I think it's resonating. It's energizing being out on the trail. And, I want to thank all of you for your your efforts. Uh, you know, I've heard about the fervor of the Tea Party. I never knew knew about tea parties before I got into this thing. And there's some fervor out there. You can feel it. You can really feel it. You're doing good things, and we'll need all your help to win here this fall. But thank you in advance because I know you're energized. It's great stuff. But uh, you know, I look at West Virginia. It's like we missed the Reagan Revolution. Uh, you know, less tax, less government, less bureaucracy. We've forgotten a lot of those things that Ronald stood for. Seems like we created more disincentives to be in business than incentives. Uh, our court system's a mess. Uh, we've got just low-hanging fruit that I see we, we just need to fix. And most West Virginians will agree with me, whatever party, that we need to fix our courts first off. Yeah. Yeah. We need to fix our courts. If we want business to be here, we need a level playing field in the courts especially. And uh, it's something we can do. It doesn't matter how many people are Democrats or you turn me down a little bit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Is that good? You hear me okay? Yeah. It doesn't matter what party you're in. Everybody, I think, understands we need to fix our courts and we need some tort reforms. Uh, we've, you know, our courts have gotten out of control. And a lot of it, we've had some terrible decisions that have forced companies out here. Back a few years ago, there was, uh, within a month, I think there was a $300 million decision against uh, Chesapeake, about a four, or maybe it's vice versa, a $400 million decision against A.T. Massey. And you wonder why big companies don't want to locate here. We've got one, uh, one New York Stock Exchange traded company in West Virginia right now, International Coal Group. And here in two weeks, we won't have any because they're being bought up by Arch. And that's just not right. We've got to do something to change that. If we can change our courts, I think we'll get some companies headquartered here. You look at uh, some of the potentials we have here, especially in your area and up north with Marcellus Shale. Uh, just here lately, Shell's come out with an announcement that they want to locate. Uh, I could call it a cracker. I've heard it called a fractionator. Uh, they want to locate something and they want to develop the Marcellus Shale and they develop the liquid and the byproducts and, you know, really spurn some industry. And that can be done right here if we have the right business climate. Clean up our ports. We've got some tax issues we need to look at. You know, uh, I fought some of the regressive taxes that uh, we all in business have to worry about the personal property taxes, the B&O taxes, the inventory taxes. And it seems like everybody says, well, we can't do anything about it. Well, we've got to start someplace. And we've got a lot of energized people that want to help our campaign. And we're starting some forums here soon. We're going to have a tax forum. We're going to have a tort reform a forum and uh, some other issues. And anybody has any good ideas, believe me, we need to hear them. Education is a huge thing we need to look at in our state. Because we've got so many opportunities for kids, but it doesn't seem like they're trained for the jobs that are out there. We've got manufacturing jobs, and we don't have the kids to fill the jobs because they're not trained in the math and science the way they are. Same in the, the oil field. We were with some oil field folks today. And uh, they're finally getting some West Virginia kids on these rigs. but. They have to get training. They're not really trained for the, I mean, it takes a lot of math skills to run a direction drill rig and to run some of the high-tech equipment that's out there. But more so, you know, you've got the Marcellus potential. We've got huge potential for all our natural resources. But we should be doing add-on industries. We should be building equipment here like we used to. We should have chemical plants and steel mills. But until we change some things, they'll never come back. But we need a fresh approach, and I think I'll provide that leadership that we need. It seems like a... Uh, that's the one thing that people don't talk about. We need leadership in Charleston. We don't any, need any more incremental change. I hear that word too much. Excuse me, it makes me cough. <coughs> <coughs> but you, you look at uh, some of the issues we've been bringing to the forefront here lately. Uh, this food tax is just a, an example of it. You know, we started, we didn't have a food tax until was a Democratic governor about 1989 said we need to start taxing food. 6% tax just kind of went through, I think it was a fourth session, wasn't it? Donald was there. 
Right. Yes. Then they say we're in a special session, you're not leaving. Special session before the regular session. Right. You're not going to leave until we pass this. Six percent. Out of nowhere. And then how many years later ago did we start reducing maybe? Six or eight? Probably six or eight, yeah. And one percent per year. And this year, there was a big deal that had to get made to force it from three to two, and hopefully next year it'll go from two to one. Well, we just came out the other day, and he's, and he's today. That was today we had a press release. I can't remember. We just need to get rid of it. It doesn't cost that much. We have surplus monies that needs to go, and it'll really help out our seniors and people that are struggling with uh, higher gas prices and everything else. But things like this, we just need to get rid of. No more incremental change. And the other thing that really drives me crazy is the, the federal government and some of the things they do to our states. I had a call from a few governors after we won the primary congressional meeting, and the one that really sticks out is Governor Rick Perry from Texas called and uh, gave me some advice. He said, you exercise every day? I said, yeah, I try to do that. He said, on Sunday, you got to go to church. I said, I do that. He said, and then rest. You'll need rest. And I, I said, what else have you got? He said, well, you push back against Washington as hard as you can. It works for me. <laughs> like that. He said, you throw that Constitution at him. I don't have it here to wave at him, but Rick Perry raised it at him. And he's won on some issues like smog. And you look what's going on with the EPA here. And today was the day. I had to write these figures down. Uh, AEP came out with an announcement. I don't know if you all heard about it. They're going to shut down by 2014 a lot of coal plants, three here in West Virginia, because of the EPA rules. One of which is, well, two right here on the river, Cameron and Phillips Form. And it's because of the EPA regs and the uncertainties they've got. And one down in Glasgow, a smaller plant. There's a bunch of plants in Ohio, they're going to retrofit for natural gas. Now I'm just thinking to myself, there's a reason, we've, we've called AP and we want to sit down and talk to them. We want to know what's going on, what can we do to help. But there's a reason they're retrofitting plants in Ohio and they're not trying to out in West Virginia. They, there's got to be a reason. I mean, it might have something to do with a business climate. And, but we've got to figure things out. That's how many jobs? 242 jobs we're going to lose in West Virginia. But we need to fight back against the EPA and stop these kind of things from happening. It's, it's got to stop. Uh, other things, you know, I mentioned uh, Shell. There's some other major oil companies looking at things here. In fact, we're going to make a trip and uh, talk to some of these folks and uh, just ask them what we can do to make the state easier and get them here. We need to ask. And it doesn't seem like the current administration asked. They just react. And when somebody comes and wants to do something, we have to make some convoluted deal to get them here. And uh, to me, you know, being a small business guy, growing a company, we need to level the playing field to make it easier for small businesses to grow and thrive in our, in our state. It seems like the, the small guys that grow, they don't get the deals. But if you're, a, I know Cabela's is a nice place, but they got a heck of a deal. Macy's gets a heck of a deal. And uh, people brag about these companies coming in, but the deals they get are unbelievable. And that's the only way we get them. We, get, we got to level the playing field, make it easy for everybody. And I know it sounds easy. It's not going to be easy to do, but we got to start someplace. And the one-party rule we've had for the last 79 years hasn't done it. I think we're the only state since 1950, or I forget the exact numbers, that's actually lost population. And it's not about topography. It's about the business climate. And uh, we just got to change. I look at uh, my two kids. They're, uh, they grew up, went to university high, went through public school system. And they wanted to get jobs after graduating from college in West Virginia. They just could not find the opportunities. They're both in Charlotte, both my girls. And I, I bet I can look around the room. And how many of you have all your kids here and your grandchildren here? Anybody lucky enough to have them stay? I mean, it's hard to do. But we, West Virginia's got so much to offer. We're, it's a great place to raise a family. I can't think of a better place to raise a family. But we got to keep the families here. And uh, I got, we got to, we just got to do it. But anyway. Uh, the campaign so far, people say it must be tiring. I'll tell you what, it's fun. Uh, Sharon's really in the middle, but she could be here. She's with her uh, mom and dad. He's had a stroke, but she'll be back tomorrow. We'll be hard at it. And we've only got less than four months to go. It, it goes quick, but uh, we learned in the primary, you just keep working hard and say, to, say just do, do what you believe, say what you believe, it works. And we're going to do the same here in this general. We can win this thing. You can feel it. People are just tired of the same old, good old boy network. And we can... We can do something about it. Get down in Charleston and we can change some things. And you can't just keep doing the same old, same old. We gotta, we gotta change some things in West Virginia. And uh, you know, I look at it, uh, there was a poll that came out, I think it was done while we we're still in the primary, it was a theoretical poll. It came out a week or two after the primary. We're within 15 points. Now we've got some other polls, we're closer now. And we don't really know how to act. It's a, uh, we were 35 points down or something to start the primary. So this is a, a blessing that we're this close and we're just going to keep saying the right things and doing the hard work it takes and we need a lot of help but we can win this fall and change the state but uh, thank you for having me
And uh, I guess, Fred, you want me to open the floor for questions? Is that? And we, oh, yeah, don't let me forget, we got bumper stickers and lapel stickers. We're going to have more signs soon. If any, maybe we got a list back there, people can sign up for things if they want. Put a piece of paper out. Still Donna's list. Still Donna's list. Okay. We're gonna do and all of you, we're going to go with Donna where there's a bass festival parade going on right now. We're going to go at the end of it. Everybody wants to come down. Keep your stickers on. We'll walk up and down the street. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you for having me and thanks for all your help and all your help to come. Thank you. We'll be Any questions? Right. Folks got some questions? Denver had prepared a, a nice written question for you, and he forgot it. Oh, <laughs> I think can remember, can I don't know if you can get it memorized or not. But he puts a lot of stuff in the newspaper, uh, yes, a lot of letters to the editor, and uh, take a chance to read one. There was one in there Saturday, right? It was all written for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question. I don't see very much uh, publicity posters or stuff like that available to pass out to other people so that uh, we can get your name and picture in front of them. We're don't want to scare them, but I would <laughs> <laughs> We've got a, I just saw a draft, I think it was two days ago, of a, just a small card to hand out with all our issues and a you know, tear-off panel to mail back. So we'll have it here soon. And uh, if Four months away, soon. Yeah, we're going to have them here, I think, in the next week. Well, Matt emailed me the other day and asked for you know, how many posters we needed. And so I will send an email out to the whole group, and if you uh, have a place where you know you can put up a sign or something, send it back to me, and I can work with Matt to make sure we get all the four rates and whatever signs. How about you know, yard we, signs? But uh, okay, if you, I'll send you an email, and then you get it to me, and I'll get it to him, and we'll get the stuff, and we'll get them set up. So. Well, the Vienna Fire Department's having ice cream, so it would be nice to have stuff to we're at Vienna? Yeah. yeah. That's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. we got stickers. That's about all we got. <laughs> and our website's going to be updated too. You'll see some new things on there here in the next few days. So I know Matt's working with a lot of people. We just sent me a note. Is that stuff being done in West Virginia or somewhere else? I don't know. The website's being done. Uh, somebody in Wheeling is doing it, believe it or not. The posters and stuff. The posters, I don't know that answer. They're being designed by West Virginia friends. Are they? Good. How do you know that? Good. Well, I'm just looking for a governor office. Because I don't need a job. That was my my idea. <laughs> I'm here for West Virginia. There's only one race. We can just hire you for anything. Yeah. Parts book need a man. That was a. Uh, my wife dreamed up the the. The son, and I'm the one that said, I don't want to be for God. I'm for West Virginia. I'm, I don't need this job. I'm here to help West Virginia. So that's the reason for that. Yes. Uh, not a question, but Don and I have had a couple of meetings to help you out. And if we can get a date in July now, we're going to have a meeting here in Wood County somewhere to give out signs and posters, that okay. type of thing around the parish and stuff. So we got people from Lewis County, Rome County, Work County, Ritchie County. Wood County, and we need help from Collar County and uh, Pleasance. Pleasance County. Well, Donna's from Pleasance, but we need help from some of these other counties. We want a contact person, right. most of them with Farm Bureau or something, you know, where we can. Uh, yeah. Mick, right here. Well, no, no, that, that's what I'm working on as well. Donna and I are working on that together. So by the time we have those signs and materials, Donna and I will have a point person for each county so that we can all visit one central location in each county and we're not. You know, I'm not driving two four by eights from Morgantown over you know, three times, so we should be able to do all that at once. I think what Don's saying is that the Farm Bureau would like for you to come to something in Chicago, okay. too, in Wood County. Is that right? Yeah. If yeah. it's uh, just something simple, but they've got a lot of Farm Bureau members down there, uh, bipartisan group. Let me ask you: Is the Farm Bureau going to have another? Questionnaire kind of session and uh, look at endorsing in the general. Uh, we haven't Bill, that last of July? Or, I'm not sure on that. I think it'll be either last of July or August okay. and endorse. That's a state, I mean. Uh, right. Or Wood County will probably meet July or August. Very good. Are you going to have the same article that showed up in the state journal about you? That's a good question. Which one was that? The uh, one on Chile? It had, no, well, that one was in there, but it had the one on everyone that was running in the Republican and Democratic Party. And the article that I read about you is why I ended up voting for you. Well, thank you. And you mentioned something about the state of Texas. 
You know, that's a state in the United States now has the best business climate. Right. I law from water to the delegation to put together to send out there to see what they're doing that we're not doing. Well, I can tell you, we're, my buddies are, I'll be in Texas here soon. Just tell your buddies to tell them that. <laughs> we're we're going to make a trip down there and talk to some folks. There's, that's being proactive. Yes. Being reactive. Well, because I always learned, I used to sell holes for a living. You talk about something. Kind of <laughs> okay. That's a deep subject. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> but I learned you better go to where the customers are. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, you can't sit here and have them come to you. That's right. So we're going to be out there. Okay. July 15th, uh, Williamstown Fire Department has a big ice cream session. And I think every politician in the country shows up like that. And I'm not saying you're a politician. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. But that's a good place to go because you may how many people go to that? Yes, Phil. Uh, at our state chair meeting last week, they asked all the state chairs to get together a list of all activities, yeah. be fair, whatever. So if you can get all, all that information to your county chair, then they in turn will send it to you. Or tell you anytime you need to know of anything right. like that, mm -hmm. feel free to Yeah, we're getting a master schedule, and there's events. You right. shouldn't right. believe how many events there are. There's thousands of events all over the state. We just don't know. Anybody, all hands on deck. What's going on? Relay for life. Is it? Tomorrow. 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 Tomorrow.
indicates stick all up about hunting. Mm -hmm. Second Amendment is not about no, hunting. No, no, no. It's about rights. It's about rights, right. the right to right. bear and bear right. arms. Right. And I hope that's what you no, mean I mean, by yeah. supporting the Second Amendment, not just hunting. No, right? not just hunting. Second Amendment, right. Good. The other thing is, how do you? what's your uh, position on home rule for the cities? That's something that uh, we had a pilot program, which people are saying is, they don't even know it's constitutional. I mean, that's something we, to me, we've got to level the playing field, as I said. And we can't just have five cities with home rule. And, well, that's you right. Know, and about a five-year program that's three and a half years in, and we're, Huntington's just starting to figure out what the rules are. Yeah. We need to have a... But, but what's your thoughts on home rule? That's something we're going to have to study and come up with the right solution. I can't spit out the exact solution. But uh, we got to look at our well, tax code and come up with the right I'm here solution. I'm to tell you that I've lived in some states that had home rule, and every tax coming down the pipe right. they have. That's so exactly right. It's all, it's never, all yeah, that's why I'm saying we got to look at we got to look at it hard. I was I've been with a lot of different city officials, and you know, just move to Pennsylvania if you don't right. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> right. Live there a while. Now there's no easy solution. We got to start looking at things because if you have to pay two percent B and O tax to be in the city limits, you're going to move out. So we've got to we've got to do something to change oh, that. We paid that for several years. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> Get Carl over here. He's yes, Bill. We've seen one more here. We've yeah. seen an increase in focus among our GED Oxford students based on the more career paths that they are exposed to. So will you, as a businessman, come talk to our students in the fall? Sure. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Yeah. I'm, I'm all over the place. Let me get another one or two. Places. Yeah, I got to get going to the party. I understand your pro-life, and we're very, very glad about that. And my personal advice to you would be to do something that Rock, that uh, Manchin did the week before election, and that is send out a nice glossy something or other, that because West Virginia is a very pro-life state. We voted Democrat. We, we are, I mean, basically a Democrat state. We went for George Bush two times right. because of the pro-life issue. And I think the pro-life issue can really help push you over the top of it. And the other thing I wanted to mention to you is that we as pro-lifers do not want our tax dollars used to fund abortions in West Virginia. <laughs> Yes, I would. Which I think that that Manchin would, or anyone else, or even Tomlin would. But we need somebody leading too that's, that that kind of helps nudge it along and get it put in before our legislator to get it to that desk. So we are counting on you. Okay. Uh, we made a commitment to Bill could get out of here by four seven o'clock. Bill, we'll give you the last question. Oh, you didn't get one. <laughs> you got one. Yeah, well, I have an actually yet. a two-part question. Uh -oh. I don't know oh, if illegal immigration is a problem in West Virginia or not, but if it is, Dallas has a good problem for getting them off the road. Mm -hmm. And the other, the other part of the question is whether or not West Virginia has controls mm -hmm. over voter registration. You know, I went to vote, and I really never thought about it until I ran for this. You don't even need an ID. Yeah. In fact, West Virginia should have even a, a bill that would uh, require anyone running for office to prove that they're eligible. Mm -hmm. So that it's, it's really, yeah, it's uh, they're, they're interwoven <laughs> because there's a lot of illegals that are... Uh, you mean somebody run for office? Yeah. What did I say? <laughs> I thought I had to give them my ID when I registered. There needs to be a law that says a person has to prove that they're eligible to run for office. But a lot of illegals are voting, and yeah. so the, the two the two issues are at a one the sneaker. There's two things that need to be tightened up. There's one more back here. Thank you. Uh, West Virginia gets eight percent of their education funds from the federal government. Who, in turn, tells us how to run. Would you be willing to get rid of that eight percent and do it on our own? We can figure out how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and senior professionalism is taught in the state of West Virginia colleges. There's well, a good one. There's a good one. Yeah, they all need to be taught. Yeah, they oh, all need to be taught. Not so much as question, but a state. You made a remark a little bit ago that hit home with me. I haven't heard you stand up there tonight and say, if I'm elected, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You said you would change what you could change. That's what we need. I don't want to have promises made to me that can't be kept. That's what Thank we're you. dealing with right now. Yeah. It's not going to be easy, but we've got to start someplace. We need some common sense in Charleston. 
Well, if you're willing to take on tort reform, you are a man made out of steel. Well, I saw it firsthand what it did to my business. Yeah. You know, we stuck it out, but we, looking at it, we shouldn't have. Yeah. And there's a lot of people just move. Yeah. All right, well, we got, you're, you're heading down. Hey, we're heading down the parade. Anybody wants to come on? Yeah. Thank you all for having me, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Close of meeting quickly here with a prayer. Dog's gonna have a prayer, and then uh, we'll just uh, we need to get out here in the next 30 or 40 minutes to clean it up. But yeah, Dawn, you can for the, those who's first time here, just explain what we do and when you're gonna oh, meet yeah. again. And if you're not gonna meet in July, you yeah, let me work. just get that's thank you. Uh, we yeah, were yeah, thinking yeah. about having a uh, meeting, but I yeah, decided yeah. not to. For, for you, you, you the first time here, we started a group two and a half, three years ago. Uh, it's a constitutional advocate, what we are. And our goal is to, it's bipartisan. We have people coming, uh, the both uh, the Democratic Party, Republican and in Independent. There's probably more Independent Republican folks for sure. But there are folks in here tonight that have been Democrats all their life, they tell me, but they're tired of what's going on. But, but what we're trying to do is educate ourselves and others on the Constitution and the, the principles it was built upon. Most of us grew up with them, but they're being thrown aside or set aside and being ignored. And we want to make sure that people understand those. So when they go and vote, they vote for a person whose beliefs line up with the Constitution, if that's what you believe they should, and then vote for that person, no matter what party they're from. That's their, but who is the, if you really read the Constitution and you read the intent, it's a conservative document, all right? And so, it really, you're looking for conservatives. There's very few left in the state of West Virginia that are Democrats. But I'll vote for a, 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 a Zell Miller uh, in Georgia in a minute. The guy's an extremely conservative guy who believes basically in the Constitution and, and the things that most of us believe in here. So if you haven't been here before, that's the goal of our group. Uh, we try to meet twice a month. We decided to delay some of the meetings during the summer because of vacation. We may still have one or two because I, I know that... So Bill and his folks are going to need some support. We may have some emails. We're going to have books as a library that, that you can read. So watch your emails. We may have a, even a short meeting one night or uh, next month just for an hour just to communicate and talk about what's going on. So that's what our group does. And uh, uh, we've, we've supported, if you recall, one of our early meetings, uh, one, uh, I think it was Woody Ireland said, our, one of our goals ought to be to get rid of Al Mollahan. All right, right? We did. And then our goal was, once uh, Dave McKinley was chosen, our goal was to get Dave elected. Well, he's in there now, too. So our goal would be to get Mr. Mullen elected. So thank you all for coming. Let's say, say a short prayer. Give us a second here, and we'll break up the meeting. Just before we pray, I have a reminder for those who are Give us one second here, please. For those who are not on our email list, on by backward.moly, sign up on the email list so you can get communication. Do not give us your email and you desire to get on that list, please do so before you leave. Thank you, Don. Okay, let's just bow our heads for a moment and we'll go. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to get together. Lord, we pray that, the, that what we heard tonight is just the beginning of a change in this state, and then eventually a change in this country, Lord. But let us not forget, Lord, what is, where a lot of our problems stem from is the moral decay of our country. We need to turn back to what we had, the way this country was founded, and our forefathers would roll over in their graves right now, Father. Now we ask you to take these people home safely tonight. We pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 Yes, save all those, and I got boxes for you.
We'll do that. Well, all right. You've probably seen as much as you could. Well, I, know, I know, but I never seen it. I see him once in a while down here. He had a slight stroke here. So that, that's what we've heard. He's seen some men pretty good. He's pretty good. He's old. He's dead. 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 Thanks for coming down. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Okay. Appreciate it. Right. You guys got a stack all the way left? Uh, we're just going to stack the stack. Let's get it.